Oh, another super smooth start to Workshop Wednesday. Hold on, you're not there. I don't know if the audio was working at the start, but we're back now. Live from the Bailey Workshop. Welcome, folks. So, today we're going to talk about drop top guitars. If you're here to find out how to make a drop top guitar, then well done, you're in the right place. Um, I'm going to show you how we make uh, a drop top guitar body blank. So making a drop top guitar is exactly the same as making any other guitar. Um, the main difference is the body blank is different. So um, <clears throat> that's what we're mainly going to be focusing on today. Um, right at the end I'm going to show you a little trick. If you haven't got, um, it's a very thin uh, cap that we're going to use to make the to make the um, drop top. If you haven't got anything like this, I'm going to show you at the end um, how to make one. So stick around till then and uh, I'm going to show you how we join thinner pieces of wood. I've got a really clever little trick to join these, um, these thin pieces of wood. Super thin piece of wood. It's gorgeous that, isn't it? A bit of spolt. I'll show you that later on, right? So stream will probably be about half an hour or an hour and we'll get through it as fast as we can. I don't like to hang about. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating stuff live. So this is live. Anything could happen and probably will. We're still waiting for the uh, the postman to come barging in or something like that. Change the camera then carry on. Point it up here. Okay, we should be back in sync. Both the cameras out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, t technology. We're working on it, folks. We've made a few little improvements. Um, I don't know if you'll notice, but um, we've got some more bigger improvements coming on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to tune in on Saturday. We're doing Wednesdays and Saturdays now. Um, on Saturday, what we're we doing on Saturday? Question and answer. And, yeah. We might have to wait and see what we're doing on Saturday. Uh, I think probably something to do with acoustics. Maybe I might put a rosette in on a guitar that I'm making for myself, which would be cool, wouldn't it? So um, I'm going to do some action. We're going to make a drop top guitar body blank. And then later on, I'm going to show you how we would join a thin top. Hang on a minute. If it's still out of sync after this, we'll just have to abandon. We did have to abandon one stream once, so let's just hope that uh, we can get it back in sync. Um, it's never perfect anyway, but yeah, it's live on the internet. It's a bit wonky. So I'm going to start by making a drop top body. Then we're going to have, um, I've got to do some shout outs and uh, some stuff in the middle. And then I'm going to show you uh, how to join thin pieces. I'm going to show you that at the end. So joining the thin pieces, that's also the same way that we, um, we do acoustics. So I just want to say before I start that, um, well, you've probably already noticed, the live streams are a little bit wonky and no nothing ever goes completely to plan. Um, so everything takes a little bit longer than it should and all that kind of thing. So what I've done is I've spent the last four years building this website, guitarmaking.co.uk, where um, I've, I've filmed, I've taught over 400 people face to face how to build guitars. So what we did was we took the process that I use, my methods of building guitars at home by hand that I developed. We've taken them and we filmed them filmed the whole process um, meticulously from four angles so you've always got the best shot and we put it step by step in online course form on guitarmaking.co.uk so if you want more information you want to go full on in depth um, then that's the place to go and there's courses there for designing and building your own guitar completely from scratch that's acoustics and electrics rock and roll so you know where to go Okay, so here we are. Here's our um, 
body blank so as I was saying it is a bit thinner than normal so um, a cap would normally be a quarter of an inch or thicker drop tops are thinner because it's actually bent so if you're not sure what a drop top is um, Carol made a little uh, one minute long slideshow I'm going to show you some pictures of a drop top guitar that I made um, for a guy called Graham Taylor so I don't think there's any audio um, on this so don't worry guys just just have a look at the pictures have a look at the pictures and then come back and I'll, sh I'll show you how we do it all right There you go, we've got the mic on. So you can see how the top is angled over the the elbow carve, what we call the elbow carve. So it's just a very thin cap, but it's bent over the body. So the piece of wood that you can see at the back there, I think the tape stopped playing, Cole. The piece of wood you can see at the back there, made from ash, is a different piece of wood glued on top. And so in order to do that, we have to shape the body blank and then we glue the cap on top okay so an easy way to do that would be to use a veneer um, but a veneer is very thin um, if you did use a veneer then you could use the vacuum press bag um, a little shout out to Darren at vacuum at bagpress.com um, you could whack it in a vacuum bag and use that as your clamp there's a little close-up of the elbow carve now this guitar was actually a through neck as you can see it could be it could be any style of construction bolt on set neck or through neck like this one so that's got a fancy bridge on it as well you can see uh, the through body bridge attachments at the bottom there that's the hands bridge with built-in piezo so it sounds like an acoustic guitar um, beautiful spray job there by our Billy um, so thanks Graham Taylor for um, commissioning that that was one of my custom guitars that I made for him um, one of a number uh, it's, it's MIDI as well so um, all, all the bells and whistles on that one and the drop top part of it was the way the elbow carve so the way this part of the guitar is is curved so it's a way why would you do it it's a way of making a bit of three-dimensionality out of a very thin piece of wood so the back that we're using here is is fairly plain fairly plain piece of wood it's lovely sound though mahogany is kind of used for its tonal qualities and its um workmanship uh, workability i should say so that's what we're going to be using and this is a beautiful piece of quilted maple I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up obviously they never look as good until the finish is on um, but it, this is a stunning piece of wood there I could dampen it down just to show you what it looks like um, I'll do that in a bit actually so here's my cap can we have an overhead cop shot please Carol? I'm going to mark on the, the centre line just to make it a little bit easier to see. Don't use the little camera then if it's behind. Been working on the camera setup guys. So I'm going to draw the centre line on the piece of the back as well 
you do a good job on the body join it becomes really difficult to see and we want them both to line up so we're going to cut an angle onto this piece of wood and then we're going to glue this down on top of it it is handy to know what shape you're going to go for so I've picked this one out this is my um, exotica shape the exotica so that's as good as any isn't it um, obviously make sure your piece of wood's big enough and the other piece so here's where we get to choose which way around it's going to go we'll just have a look to make sure there's no obvious there's no obvious knots or marks there is a strange mark there I'm not sure what that is so let's glue the cap onto that and hide that whatever that is it's just a strange mark in the wood that's grown in I'm going to mark the center on this side then question do the do the blanks for the body need to be quarter sawn or um, flat does it matter so we've had a question about the grain for the body um, no it doesn't matter if it's an acoustic guitar then yes it needs to be quarter sawn if possible um, obviously it's not against the law to use wood that isn't quarter sawn but we would certainly prefer to use quarter sawn wood. We'd always prefer to use quarter sawn wood if possible. Um, but here's how it goes. On the fretboard, always quarter sawn. On the neck, always quarter sawn if possible. The body doesn't really matter. Um, for an electric guitar at least. It's nice to have, but it's certainly not essential. And most highly figured wood it won't be quarter saw and the grain will probably be pretty wild. So now I can line up my centre lines you see and make sure everything everything's lined up. I'm going to draw my shape on. There's a centre line on my pattern here as well. Um, I had a question about patterns. Um, from it was Jeff Ellis wasn't it Carol shout out to Jeff and Andrew so there's a question about the patterns we're, we're working on building the archive the pattern archive for guitarmaking.co.uk um, it's not there yet we've got basic patterns up there if you join uh, the course in fact there's a whole free set of patterns um, you just need to sign up for a free membership and then you've got access to the forum and all that kind of stuff and you get a free set of patterns um, but we are working on um, scanning in all my patterns I'm pretty old school so everything's kind of made from wood and drawn on paper and that kind of thing um, so getting them into the computer is uh, is turning into a bit of a battle um, but we're we're halfway there. We've got um, we've got all the we've got all the um, patterns scanned in, and so we're working on it. Carol, you're over there doing sign language. What's the matter? I wasn't. I, I thought I you are. All your jeweler is shaking like tambourines. I've got no. Got the, um, start dancing to the sorry, sorry, sorry. to the sound of your jewellery. Hello to Daniel in Brazil. Hi Daniel in Brazil. Let's get on with it. Right. Dan, how you doing man? So, here's my guitar. I need to know roughly where my bridge is, okay? So, I'm just going to grab a fretboard, line it up. Um, I've gone through all this kind of layout procedure on the full course. So, I just need to know roughly where my bridge is. If you want to know more about how to lay out a guitar, then that's all covered already in the course, so I'm not going to go through all that. 
I just need to know roughly where my bridge is because this angle that we're making it can't go under the bridge um, your bridge needs to sit on the flat part okay so I've just drawn on roughly where a bridge will go I'm going to make sure we stay well clear of that so this angle here I mean I was taught when I were a nipper building guitars if you put the um, put the guitar on as if you're going to play it and then your elbow put your arm where your arm would sit back a bit Carol thank you then what you need to do is draw a line at 90 degrees to your arm so if I do that I'll do it on my drawing then it would be maybe something like that so there's how you make a custom carve custom requirements right I'm just going to transfer that now onto the onto the piece of wood for the back just by marking it there and there I'll draw it across so that is the line that I do not go over okay so now all I need to know is how, how deep do I go um, it's really up to me it's up to you you're only restricted by how flexible is your piece of wood so we're gonna keep putting it on and testing it making sure that it's flexible enough so when I was getting this piece of wood ready I was flexing it like this and I was I was thinking is that gonna be enough uh, I have to use in the end Carol, I'm trying to show them something and I can't see. I'm so sorry. See it's bending? I don't think you can see it bending. Okay. Pretty rubbish demonstration there, but that'll do. It bends because it's thin. And I can make it thinner to make it bend easier. And now I'm using my guitar maker's eye. I'm not telling you which one it is. <laughs> Can work it out yourself. You've had a question relating to the body blanks. Go on then. Um, uh, question. Matthew Ward's asked, do you, would you thickness the body blank before? Um, yes, um, these pieces have both been thickness. That's what I was trying to say. This one's very thin. So with a drop top, um, this one's about four and a half mil, and I would say definitely five mil is probably maximum. So a normal, a normal thin cap would be a quarter of an inch. So it's thinner than a thin cap, but it's not a veneer. I started to say that earlier and then got distracted. This is the thing with the live stream, you see. Um, the videos on my website are all um, concise and clear and everything makes perfect sense. The live streams are all over the place. So the top, I just kept making it thinner until I thought that'll do. And I used my guitar maker's eye. And um, comes out about I would I would recommend about four mil, um, but you can go down to an eighth of an inch to make it easier. Um, I know another guitar maker. I mentioned this in the last live stream. I think it was the last live stream. The whole reason I'm doing this is because it came up in the recent live stream. Um, but drop tops were made famous by um, a guy called Tom Anderson in America, and also my pal. Rob Williams guitars um, in the UK. He was the manager at Eggle Guitars for a while, which is the, the factory. Oh, I've said the name now. <laughs> the factory that shall not be named. So yeah, that's that's where I learnt my trade and Rob was um, one of the managers there for a while. Um, fantastic guitar maker, as is Patrick Eggle, obviously. So I, I was lucky to learn from some of the best. Um, and now I'm in the position to pass it on to you guys so that's my mission um, I've distracted myself again so yeah I got these prepared before I would recommend about four to four and a half mil yeah my old mate Rob said you will break the odd one so uh, 
so even a master guitar maker will break one occasionally doing this it is there is a risk to doing a drop top so let's get that clear from the start um, the thickness of the mahogany I take took this down to a 40 mil so the overall thickness is going to be about well I always recommend 44 to 46 mil for a, for an average size body um, so if you if you're going to have a trem you need that kind of thickness for the um, for the depth of the trem so this is going to come out about 44 45 mil in total so I've got 40 mil thereabouts about 40 four and a half mil and this should be flexible enough to bend to make a an elbow carve but because it's not carved the top is dropped on and bent over it's called a drop top there you go that's the longest introduction to drop tops in world history let's get on with it make some sawdust now it's good to know what shape your body is because um, what I like to do is I like to roughly cut it out first so I'm going to head over to the bandsaw and I'm going to roughly cut out just this area now those guys who've been on the course and who've been here you know this but I like to keep my body blank as a big square lump of wood for as long as possible because it's easier to work with a big square lump of wood we can clamp our patterns to it and um, well even if we drop it or something if we dent this it doesn't really matter um, once you've cut it out it all becomes a lot more um, tricky to work on um, it's an awkward shape to clamp and you haven't got so much space to put your clamps uh, so we leave cutting out until right the last minute with the exception of a drop top um, there are a, another few exceptions as well but there is an exception with a drop top I like to just cut out this area here that you can't see because my camera woman's gone on strike again Sorry, I'm there's so many questions yeah you need to focus on the building while we're building and the questions while we're doing the questions so I'm going to just cut this bit I'm not going to cut the whole shape okay I'm just going to cut this bit and I'm actually going to do that on both pieces just to make less wood to work on right so I'm heading over to the bandsaw now giving my camera person a heads up Right, this would be a good time, wouldn't it, to uh, shout out to Marcel. Do you want me to read this? Right, check this out. I'll tell you about this in a minute. I've got a new face mask, guys. Look at that. Yeah. Thanks, Marcel, for that. And uh, Paula. Paula, who, who made it. Paula's his wife. And, um, Marcel's... One of our biggest supporters. Thanks for that. Look at that. I've got a new mask. Finally. Yeah. Oh, that's quality. Yeah. Quality mask. It's not meant for bandsaw in there, is it? So the main reason for doing that folks was it means there's less wood to work on now so um, it just makes the next bit a bit quicker but notice uh, what I do like to do is make sure my the piece at the back 
is slightly bigger than the piece at the front. It just means it's easier to line up. Because if you if you imagine the piece at the front is bigger, then I can't see, okay, it's hard to line up. It's more or less impossible to line up. So just make sure the piece at the top is thinner. Line it with my center lines. So that's where it's going, exactly there. Now I'm going to make my angle. So I think I'll probably clamp onto this corner. Let's see how that looks. This corner. I'll try this corner. I think I prefer this one. Poor old cow. Come on, cow. Come on, Carol, keep oh, up. But more like, come on, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate your patience, guys. Remember, it's live. Right. Now, do you need a plane for guitar making? Um, no, but it helps. You can build an entire guitar without a plane. But if you're doing a drop top, it certainly helps. Oh, look at that! That's the most fun a guitar maker can have with his clothes on. He's using a plane. Look at that. Beautiful! <laughs> right, a couple of tips with the plane then. Um, a nice sturdy bench that doesn't wobble helps. Um, nice sharp plane. Um, yeah, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, right, the best tip with a plane is instead of going straight at it like and just going thunk, what you've got to do is tilt the plane slightly and then the plane will cut, it will slice, it will slice in a lot easier than just trying to cut all at once, thunk. If you slice then it cuts a little bit of the blade and then you're only using all the blade um, once you're into the full cut. So it's a lot easier to cut if you cut at a slight angle. It's up to us how deep we go. Let's get a look at that. If we could, um, if we could just line that up. We've got the center lines drawn on, so we can put this on exactly where we want it, and then bend it down. So you can't see that, can you? Let me turn around. At the moment, easy peasy. I can bend that down really easy. So I'm gonna go a bit more. I might go twice that. That's about a quarter of an inch, so let's. It's about six mil, so we'll do about 12 mil. I'll do about the same again. I'm just going to make sure that I don't go over that line. So, what I'm trying to achieve here, I'm not trying to get a nice curve like you're probably imagining. I'm trying to get a dead flat facet, dead flat. So let's get a ruler on that. Any old ruler would do, straight edge or a ruler. So it needs to be straight this way. And when I say straight, we'll get into that in a second. And I also want it to be straight this way. Okay. So I think I'm going to do a little bit more. Let's just clean this. If it 
sliding around, we could put it on some gripper mat. That would help. So what did you guys think of the uh, the drop top guitar that I showed you then? It's nice, weren't it? I wish I could show you more of the, my work, but we'll have to get there. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Okay, right, now when I say flat, what I actually mean is I like it to have a slight relief on this, okay? So perfectly flat is, is okay. If you can get that perfectly flat, that is fine. But ideally, can you see that? Where the plane's dug in a little bit in the middle. That's ideal, because that means that when I put my piece of wood on, it will be touching just at the ends. Out a bit, Carol, please. Get both ends in. There we go, look. Can you see the slight bit of relief in the middle? That's what we're looking for. It's not perfect because I've got a gap at the ends, look. All right, so we can get that a little bit better. I would suggest using a sanding block, some sandpaper. Change the angle a couple of times, give them a look. Okay, sanding block. That was just self adhesive 80 grit on a flat block. Notice still, I'm still working flat. I'm not trying to put any fancy curve in. I can see quite clearly that that's flat. You guys can't. So let's get a pencil. Can we see a pencil anywhere? It's funny how all the pencils disappear on the live streams, isn't it? There was two here a minute ago. Now all I've got is one without a point on it. Sharp with. Right, scribble on it. If you can't see what's going on, scribbling on it helps. Now, if I sand it. There's graphite in there that actually acts as a lubricant and it stops your paper from clogging up. So it helps in that respect. But it also shows you your low spots will stay with pencil and the high spots will clean up. So I'm just going to clean up this area.
keeping the block as flat as I possibly can. Hopefully you can see that's pretty good. But we're looking for perfection. Now because there's no such thing as perfection, we have to cheat. Which means that I'm looking for that bit of relief in the middle there. Can you see that there? Look at that. Is that a good example there? Let's see if I can get a good example. I want it to be touching at the ends here and here. Here and here. Basically where it crosses the sides there and there. And then. Okay, so we can work that in. If, um, to just finish it off, we can use a blade like this to scrape it. So the old scraper technique, you'll have seen that before if you're a regular. If not, I'll just quickly demonstrate. What you do is you put your, your thumbs in the middle there. Thumbs in the middle and then fingers at the, fingers like that. So my fingers are always going to be above the blade. Stop! Thank you. Fingers are always going to be above the blade. You can't hurt yourself if you do it properly because your fingers are always above the blade. So then what you do is you bend it slightly and then you can use that to just go over that area. So a scraped surface sticks a lot stronger than uh, than a sanded surface. So scraping the surfaces helps as well. So if we can get it just a little bit relieved in this direction, can you see that? Ideal. And then when we whack our piece of wood on top, we know that it's going to look perfect at the edges. Hopefully that made some kind of sense. Now what I've got is this super sharp corner. That's too sharp for the wood to bend over. So now I'm happy with my shape. I'm just going to spend like 90 seconds or a minute just rounding over that corner enough so that it's enough for the wood to bend over. It doesn't take much. And that is now ready to receive the top. Let's turn it around so you get a better view. I'm going to show you how we fix that on. So, um, if you were making a thin line guitar, a hollow body guitar, then you would need to do all your internal routing at this point. So, can we see that curve there? Yeah. You don't want to go too crazy folks on a drop top because as I say you can break the top there is a risk involved in doing this okay I'm going to show you how we clamp it up hopefully the camera will follow what I'm doing for a change. So a baseboard at the back, that's just to protect the back because I'm going to be using clamps. Um, I'm going to just put one clamp on, temporarily clamping it to the bench. 
so um, I'm going to actually glue this on in a minute. The worst thing that can happen when you're gluing is that it's, it moves and then the centre lines don't line up. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to put a couple of pins in and I'm going to make sure it's well clear of the guitar body outline obviously. I'll countersink that as well. So let's put some screws in. Not too tight because I can split this wood. It's so thin, it's very easy to split. That's why we don't put screws all the way around. You could, if you were short of clamps, you know, you could just put screws all the way around the edge. And if you marked out your pickups, you could even put screws in the middle to hold this on while the glue dries. But there's always the chance every time you put a screw in, there's always a chance that you split the wood. So I have to be careful and rather than risk it, I'm going to use clamps. But those screws are there so that now we can take this cap off and put it back on and we know it goes back in exactly the right place. It's always a good idea to mark the back because you can put it on the wrong way round if you're not careful. Righty ho. So we've got some new lights coming this week. Uh, I can't wait to see what that looks like. Tune in on Saturday for that. Um, hopefully brighten everything up and you'll be able to see everything a lot clearer. I've got to say the support we've had from you guys has been absolutely phenomenal. I can't thank you enough for everything. Um, I'm gonna do some shout outs in a minute as soon as I've got this glued on. All right, so we're nearly there. So we're going to need to cut the pattern. So that's obviously the main difference. I mentioned these patterns earlier. Um, these are all going to be available on the website as soon as we can get them on there. Um, but for now, I'm going to cut that on the bandsaw and then I'm going to use this is a block and this is a block and I'm going to dry clamp everything up. There we go. Just rub that burr off there. That best mask I've ever had. Best mask I've ever had myself. Thanks for that. I'm going to put my two best clamps here and here. This is where we need the most pressure because that's where the bend starts. We need the most support there. In fact, if I turn this around, you'll probably see it better. That's better, isn't it? There and there. What I'm doing now, as our regular BYOs will know, yeah, I've decided to call you all my build your owners now. So you're all my build your owners. If you're watching this, you're a build your owner as far as I'm concerned. You might not have finished your guitar yet. You might not have even started yet. But the intention's there, isn't it? And that's all that matters to me. You're a build your owner. This was a poor template. My build your owners. Yeah, the poor old template yes. suffers on this one. So now I'm just going to fill in and put clamps all the way around the outside. So it's not rocket science, is it, guys? Um, 
One thing I might do is I might wet the cap because it flexes just that little bit easier. So you can see now, you can see the maple getting clamped down, look. There we go. Still a few gaps. So I'm just gonna continue putting clamps on and filling up the gaps. Now I've done this before many times, so I'm pretty confident that uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be okay. But the whole reason for dry clamping is to confirm that. And if it's not okay, then we can do something about it before we glue it. So that's our plan. I can see already, look, there's, there's virtually, well, there's no gap there around there. You can see a bit of pencil line there, but that's not a gap. So I think I'll be quite happy with that. I'm just going to get a couple more clamps ready. So there's two reasons to dry clamp. Reason number one is so that you can check it like I've just shown you. So we can test to make sure there's no gaps. Looking for gaps. Right, now if we left this body blank square, do you remember I pre-cut this? If we'd have left it square, then it makes it a lot harder to check. So cutting it roughly to shape first also helps you check because you're looking at the actual glue line rather than miles away from the glue line, if you see what I mean. Right, so that looks good. If we go a bit of a wider shot, please, Carol. Because I need to show them how we impress the ladies. This is how we do it. Long way. Look at that. Carol, are you impressed? No. How can you not be impressed by that? Okay, I'm impressed by your clamp wielding skills, but not the fact that you call me a lady. Right, so two reasons for clamping. One is so that you can check your glue joint before you put glue on it. The other is so that you can get all your clamps ready and you haven't got to run around looking for clamps while the glue's drying. So um, that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing my running around looking for clamps before I get any glue involved. So you want to put as many clamps on as you can. can never have too many clamps and uh, I've got a right old random collection here I just grabbed a load of clamps that were nearest to me <laughs> and, uh, and this is them so yeah I'm gonna put a few more on and then I would say you probably need about 10 or 12 for this kind of job um, and then you see all my clamps are ready. I haven't got to then spend ages turning them and getting them to the right length before uh, before we start. Everything's all ready to go. So now I am ready for to actually glue it. Always worth doing a dry run first for multiple reasons. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, it's a good idea when you're gluing to just have a little tidy up of your bench. What was that, Carol? What? You were laughing. What was that? She's got no idea. How tidy my bench is. You've got millions of questions. 
Right, I'm taking all the clamps off and making a pile. All I have to do is undo them two turns and they're all ready to go. Go on, hit me with some questions then while I just glue it. Because um, the gluing procedure is just exactly the same as what you've just seen, except for there's glue involved. So I can answer questions as I'm working. Okay, so, uh, right, TV's asked, have you got any tips to make the tops to thickness if you haven't got a drum sander or playing the thickness side, he's assumed that's what you've used. How do you, have you got any tips for other ways to get top, tops and thickness? My main tip, if you wanna, my face. Yeah, my main tip is to make sure you buy your wood ready thicknessed because um, as you've probably heard me say before, um, getting your piece of wood flat and straight and to the right thickness is half the battle. That's, it's, it's as hard as actually making a guitar. Um, if you haven't got big machines like me, I've got planer and a, a thickness of sander. So I could put my pieces of wood through and they come out sanded and to whatever thickness I want. I just keep putting them through until they're the right thickness. If you haven't got those kinds of things, number one tip, buy your wood at the right thickness. <laughs> so if you've failed at that, then um, there are some things you can do. You can use a router. If you start at one end and route, take maybe two or three mil off, and um, you'll always have a bit left at the end that you can't get. But if your bit of wood is big enough, <laughs> then you can do that. You can use a router. Or you can have, you can, um, so I've got, whatever I tell you, I've got to make sure it's it's safe. But there are, overhead routers where you can um, you can build a jig where you can feed your piece of wood underneath but you'd have to google that there's a certain thing called a safety planer safety planer which is available from um, America Stumac it goes in your drill press and it works like um, well kind of like a planer um, and of course that is the the simplest answer is a hand plane like you just saw me use I used to do I could do four bodies a day using that um, I used to have to we have four people on our workshop course usually four people come to my workshop we build guitars completely from scratch but I used to do the prep for them and you know 20 years ago I was doing it all by hand with a hand plane just like you saw me do there a hand plane and a, and a sanding block and a lot of time and sweat see if you haven't got a lot of money you might just have a lot of time that's what I had when I was younger so um, I had the time to just spend doing it all by hand with a hand plane and a sanding block um, but yeah I've also done it with a router router method um, but you end up with a little bit that you can't get at the end you could just plane that last bit off get most of it with the router and then plane that last bit off um, or just gonna have to bite the bullet ain't you and get yourself a, a sander thickness sack more questions? Um, just when you think you can't spend any more money on tools right Robin Gosman has asked uh, can you have can you put a facet on but do you have to, without a drop top can you just have the facet as a feature what are you doing? Sorry folks, I was just making a spreader. I like to use these old credit cards or phone cards as spreaders and I just I cut some slots in it to make it toothed. So when you're putting the glue on it spreads the glue. I'll show you what I mean. Um the question was, what was the question again? Uh, oh yeah, can you, do you have to have the top on top? No, of course not. It's just an elbow calf. Robin. Robin. Um, Good question. Um, but this is, let me just finish the question. So without the, without the top, it's just a normal elbow calf. And it would normally be the last thing we do. Um, because it's much easier to work on a big square lump of wood. As soon as you put any shape into it, it makes it difficult to clamp. So um, 
Yeah, if you're just doing a normal elbow carve, as we would call it, then um, obviously that's a lot easier and you would normally leave it right till the end, almost the last job before you sand it. So um, yeah, all that's covered on the standard course. If you go to the website, then, um, then you'll see all that, hopefully. Um, EP said, um, is, does it pay to, can you use cheap blades, uh, standard blades, or do you need? Those blades that I'm using are the cheapest blades money can buy. I got them from Amazon and super cheap. So they're they're okay. cheaper than I was paying 20 years ago. Right. Buy them from Amazon. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, next, uh, so William Boy in can Brazil. You, can you just have a bit of... Okay. Woo. So I'm going to put plenty of glue on. I should have filled my thing up, shouldn't I? We've been here before. Um, someone asked about glue, I said it was tight bond, is there any particular kind of tight bond? You can use any wood glue to make guitars, so don't get hung up on that. Even just ordinary white PVA wood glue is perfectly fine. Um, you get traditionalists using animal glues and um, all kinds of stuff, um, but most modern guitar makers we use tight bond which is a yellow glue um, they call it an aliphatic resin um, but um, I'm told by experts Darren King that really it's all the same stuff but it's just different formulations but tight bond is certainly dries faster than white glue so the reason we use yellow glue because it dries so fast. I should have filled that with that took ages and it's still a bit dry. When you're gluing you don't want to rush but you also you don't want to take too much time because the glue's drying as soon as you start putting it on. That pot needs filling up. Let's have a bit more glue. So what I like about a toothed spreader is it spreads the glue really evenly it actually leaves these little peaks and when you put your piece of wood on they spread out and leave a perfectly even coat as long as you haven't left any dry spots so yeah make sure you've filled your glue pot up so it doesn't take half an hour to tip the glue out and, um, If you're wondering how much glue do you need, you need just enough to get squeeze out all the way around. Make sure there's no dry spots. Um, as you're talking about glue, EP said, which surely if you, you aim for a dip in the middle of the, a, a bit of relief, a bit of dip in the middle of the, the drop, um, surely that makes it more likely to stick less well. No, the, we're only talking about, um, you know a hair's width the wood will actually expand to fill a little gap like that but what's most important is that it's gripping at the edge you don't want to see a join at the edge you don't want to see a glue line so if you could get that perfectly flat then okay brilliant brilliant we've got it but it's really hard it's much easier to make sure it's just very very slightly just very slightly relieved and I'm only talking about like a hair a hair's width just enough to let some light through now it can be difficult to find your holes again so make sure you've actually hit make sure you've actually hit the holes and then uh, and then I'm going to screw those in again Clamp it up, two best clamps just right before the curve where it needs the most support.
and then I'll put the, uh, the ones around here first Turn it down so you can see it Where's my block? So the block is there really just to protect the wood and spread the weight Spread the weight of the clamp Beautiful. Just go ahead and start whacking all the clamps on now. You said there were millions of questions, so let's have a few of them. Right, so, um, we're working on a bit. So, um, TV. Um, asked about uh, a different method. Um, I might have done a bit about putting a wedge under the drop top instead of. Right, let me go and find the question. Shout out to TV 101010 by the way. Um, if you go to the website, the guitar making site, and check out the forum, you'll see a post by. That's Tony, our Tony, TV 101010. He's got five on the go at the moment. He's, he's a, been a busy man. Right, and he's been posting, showing you guys all the guitars that he's built um, using my methods. Tony came on our course, came to the workshop a while ago, and then he's carried on building at home ever since. Uh, so, what he said is. So, nice one, Tony. Could you put a small wedge onto the corner instead of the plane and the sanding block? Could you put a small wedge onto the corner to lift it up and then run a router over the top to cut the corner? Could you use a router to cut the corner? Is what was asking there? I'm pretty sure that you could come up with some kind of routing jig to route that. Yes, um, using that using the surface routing technique, you could probably come up with some kind of jig. Um, but it would probably be a lot more hassle than just getting your plane out and you'd have it done in 10 minutes you know sometimes unless you're making 10 or 100 sometimes the by hand method is faster than the machines there we go it's done Question. Just checking for gaps. Can't see any. So let's put that to one side, and I'm going to show you how we. If you haven't got, uh, if you've got a thin couple of thin pieces of wood you want to make a drop top from, I'm going to show you how we join them. <laughs> so don't go away. A uh, quick question, yeah. Right, so, um, William Boy from um, Brazil. William. William. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> he is saying, how do you, how, how would you, have you got any tricks to bend five mil rosewood um, with your top? Because it's extremely hard. Um, so, what have you got any tips for that? Yeah. He says five mil rosewood. Tips for bending five mil rosewood. Um, you could heat bend it. You could steam it. So if you made a big box, um, it needs to have a breather hole. Inject steam. You don't want pressure building up, but you, you inject it in steam. Um, make a steam box, basically, and then you, that'll do it. That's one way to do it. Another way would be to make it thinner. Just make it thinner. Why not? Um, you could maybe bend it over a hot pipe, but of course these are all like bodge. That would be a bodge job let's face it my advice would be make it thinner or you could try steaming it put it in a steam box so if we could have a shot of the bench please carol less up there more down there thank you we're going to um i'm just using a couple of sticks of wood they could be anything 
mine happen to be mahogany because that's a couple of neck blanks I've got lying about. You need another couple of sticks. Nothing special. And this is just a baseboard, a piece of plywood with a slot down the middle. So there's a whole section on the courses. We've got a build your own electric and build your own acoustic. There's a whole section on each course which is just about the patterns. Um, how to make all these kind of things and this is one of those so um, this is a little um, freebie I'm giving away to you guys on YouTube this is my joining board it's just a piece of plywood with a slot that I've routed and a couple of um, bits of wood screwed to it so here's the bit of wood I'm going to join look at that book matched so for you guys, um, this is how it starts life. It starts life like this. And then somebody's come along and cut it right down the middle and it opens like a book. That's why they call it book matched. So this piece of wood grew next to this piece. So it's the best match. If we look at the back now, and this is a pretty wild piece of wood, eh? it's gorgeous. But if you look at the back, it matches really well on the front, not so well on the back, as you can see. Hopefully you can see that. Still looks stunning, but this bit didn't grow next to that bit, you see. So it doesn't match as well. Um, so we're going to join this this way around. You've still got the option of joining it this way because it's still book matched. But we've chosen, well I've chosen that, that I prefer that. Okay, so I've already run these over the plane at the edges, but that's not good enough. Um, it's a start. But as I say, as guitar makers, we pride ourselves on our glue joints. And we're looking for invisible glue joints. So I'm going to show you a cheat how we can um, how we can get a virtually invisible glue joint with virtually invisible skill level. Did you see what I did there? It was clever that one. Bit of wordplay. Right, a pencil would be good. Did anyone see where the pencils went? Oh, I've found two now. Right. Side, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark one on that side and I'm going to mark one on this side. So I'm going to work on one of them upside down. That's because I'm going to be working on them. And, um, if there's any angle imparted when I'm working, if I do them both the same, when they join, they'll join like that. But if we do one upside down and there's a slight angle, then they'll join like that, if you see what I mean. It's hard to do from this angle, but Carol don't care. It's too late now, Carol. That was minutes ago. So it's to make it join like that, flat rather than that. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to make sure when I'm working I can always see the tick. And this is just a flat block, could be anything, could be a block of wood, anything you've got that's dead flat. Stick some sandpaper to it. This is the self adhesive gold sandpaper and I like to get another piece of wood and just press it flat. Can you zoom out a little bit, Carol, so they get a better view? Get some different angles. So in a book, it will tell you to plane these edges. But I can tell you now, you'll struggle with that. Especially with highly figured wood like this. I promise you, this is a lot easier.
So as I mentioned earlier, a sanded glue joint isn't as strong as a scraped or planed glue joint. You don't want really, you don't want dust getting all to the little pores because it blocks the glue. Um, whereas a scraped or a cut finish is perfectly clean surface. So what I would do is finish by just giving it a quick scrape with the blade. Just one scrape is all it needs. Repeat with the other one. So what I do is I put one underneath just to lift the top one up a bit and then I put a, a spacer here so it just makes it stick out a little bit. So when I'm working I'm only working on the top one. Let's see if you can see that from the edge. Can you see that? Yeah, you get the idea. So even though these have been done with um, a planer, you know, expensive piece of machinery, they're still not perfect. I always like to finish them by hand. Give it a scrape. And you can do your um, acoustic backs and tops exactly the same way. Um, obviously you wanna you wanna hold them together and do your candling, which is um, hold them up to the light, see if there's any gaps. That does not look too bad to me. So we're going to go for it. I'm not going to actually glue this one, but I'm going to show you how we do it. I'll just dry clamp this one. And, um, and that's pretty much the end of the demonstration. So if you've got any questions, guys, now's the time to ask. Right, okay. So, uh, Roger Appleby asked about a shooting board. Would you use a shooting board to level more pipes? Yeah, well, that's basically what you would do if you were using um, with a plane. But what I've shown you is easier. You don't have to sharpen your plane. You can just use sandpaper. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be as... Uh, um, if we were doing this kind of thing in the factory and we had visitors, <laughs> we might just hide the blocks and get the planes out and pretend we were really clever. I'm joking. We would never do that. But um, but yeah, um, depends on your skill level. If you're confident with a hand with a plane, and you've got a shooting board, or you want to go ahead and try that method, go for it. It certainly um, works. But you need to have a plane, and it needs to be sharp. Um, can I ask what a shooting board is? The shooting board is just a way of holding your piece of wood. It's very similar to what I've shown you, but but you use a plane instead of a sanding block. Stephen Pasco, ages ago, right at the beginning, asked about: Have you ever found any woodworm, or worms, or creatures in your in your wood? And let's see, would you discard them or treat them? Um, that's the first part of his question. Um, worm or critters okay years ago I would use wood where um, people like to bring you wood if you if they know you're a guitar maker people will bring you wood and say oh you must make a guitar from this um, so I used to accept a lot of stuff like that um, I don't anymore because it can often cause more trouble than it's worth so I would always recommend you buy your wood from an actual guitar maker supplier because then you know it's properly dried and it won't have any woodworms or any nasty surprises so um, in the past it has happened years and years ago when I used to accept them um, I had a piece of old I once which had some woodworms in um, what I did was when it became apparent I ran runny super glue in and um, I glued them in <laughs> We had a one fretboard, didn't we? 
just yeah you'll occasionally see wormholes in wood that's that's bought um, but it's usually on the outside of the wood so it's usually easy to just cut off and remove it okay um, right, right I've just um, moved this block Carol can we have a, some down here please I moved this block so that um, we just need to make sure that our glue line is level with the slot there and then this one here I've left a gap of an inch or so and we're going to use wedges to apply the pressure so these are just a random collection of wedges that I were nearby we're going to use those to apply the pressure lost one there it is so to stop it from popping up we put on these sticks wooden clamps um, so yeah this is the way I do it folks um, it's not the way I always do it but it's the way I sometimes do it and it's certainly the easiest cheapest way to do it that I've found um, if you guys know a, a better way then um, let me know in the comments for sure and I'll pass it on to everybody else because that's what this is all about we're all about sharing knowledge here we're not about I'm not like most guitar makers most guitar makers won't even let you in their workshop um, well I love spreading the word and showing people just how easy it is you don't need to be a genius to make a guitar anybody can do it so don't let anybody tell you you can't and also you don't need a massive workshop full of tools you don't really need that many tools there are a few important ones that you do need and I've made a video all about that you can check out on the website um, yeah that was filmed that was taken from another live stream um, and the audio quality wasn't absolutely brilliant so I think I might remake that film at some point and do another essential tools for guitar making um, and that, that is uh, on the list of stuff if you guys have got any other ideas of what you'd like to see me do um, that's what I'm here for so I would love it if you guys that's what I'm I'm doing here um, the reason I'm here making the, uh, showing you how we make drop tops is because that's something that came up in the comments um, and I thought it'd be a, a, a good demonstration um, so how we make drop tops is exactly the same as we make any other guitar it's the body blank that's different so hopefully I've shown you how we make the body blank now um, for a drop top guitar making the body is just exactly the same as normal so you just follow the course through as normal and you'll end up with a spectacular drop top guitar like the ones in the pictures we showed you earlier so if you joined halfway through and you're not sure what we're talking about just watch it again from the start and you'll see um, and with that guys I think if we just have a shot of this lovely spalted down here um, this is dry clamped and ready for gluing you can just see that glue joint oh it's there, there it is there, I'm looking along side so I've, I had a little practice run, it's ready for gluing job done I'm not going to actually go ahead and glue it though uh, I'll show you how I would do it though so what I would do normally is put the glue on here and then put it down here and then we put this on so the first piece can stay clamped to the board the second piece has got the glue on people are always asking to put glue on one piece or both pieces doesn't matter as long as you put enough on so you've got a little bit of squeeze out all the way along 
So what we do with these is we just put them on but we don't pull the lever until we've put the wedges in. And the wedges apply the sideways pressure. Now we can pull the clamps and you can see. Let's get a close up. We haven't used the super close up camera today. Let's have a super close up. Any time today would be good. Sometime this week would be nice. So somewhere in there is a glue joint. I only spent a few minutes working on it. I'm not going to glue it because it's not perfect. If I come down this end I can see there's still a bit of a gap. So it needs a bit of work. Carol, change camera please. Still needs a bit of work. I'm not ready to glue it yet but I'm not going to bore you guys with that because um, our work here is done. I've demonstrated how we glue a thin cap together and I also demonstrated how we carve and shape the back of the body ready to receive a drop top and then we went and actually glued it so brilliant we're done carol's got a question well we've got a couple of things did you not have a listen right so um uh someone's asked to, parsnips asked about the spot um and he's saying is that not um aren't the, isn't the spot areas of weakness but you didn't talk about spot right? it doesn't matter how strong it is because it's an electric guitar nobody's going to be um, jumping up and down on it. Um, spalted wood is not the strongest wood in the world, for sure, but it's beautiful. So um, there's no reason not to use it. But if you do use it, you definitely should be wearing a mask because, um, yeah, because the spalt is, um, it's basically a type of fungus that's growing through the wood. You don't want that. You don't want the spores in your lungs. They call it, um, 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 is what they call it. What do they call it? What the, the... Woodturner's face, they call it. <laughs> okay, right. Um... But I didn't want to say that in case it was wrong. Now I've said it now. Right. Woodturner's face, they call it. Fact. Um, makes had... uh, makes your face go red, irritating with the um, the sawdust from the, the um, spalted. But it's never bothered me to it's be fungus. honest. Well, you always wear it. It's Question. Fungus. Right. It's fungus, and you have to wear a mask. Um, and that's why we spray those. We don't do oiling on those, do we? Um, Phantom is asking, will you show him how to make a Les Paul? I will show you how to make a Les Paul, Phantom. You, you have to join the, um, the course. Uh, if you don't want to join the course, because to watch the courses, you have to become a premium member, which costs money, obviously. So if you don't want to spend any money, then um, look at my channel, guitar making channel. Um, I just did um, a full on live stream build. I built it live um, from start to finish. So it wasn't a Les Paul. In fact, it was this guitar here, this very guitar. Which we still haven't. But this is a double cut. A Les Paul is a single cut. So you could make a Les Paul using exactly the same techniques. It wouldn't be exactly the same as a Les Paul. Um, but I wouldn't recommend you go around copying exact copies of other people's guitars anyway. Do something a little bit different. So I'm not going to um, talk about how much anything costs because uh, prices change all the time and that kind of thing. But, it's only monthly fee. Um, but yeah, check out the website. If you want to know how much stuff costs, then check out the website. Right, you've had uh, a couple of requests for laminate top bending. Um, and uh, ooh, other things as well. So those things to talk about in the future, aren't they? Yep. In lays, there's lots of people asking. Yeah, brilliant. That. Any more ideas you've got for things you want me to do? Just leave them in the comments, guys. Um, we've got a, a list of stuff growing. Um, I want to cover everything. I want to show you everything. I've made over. Well, I've taught over 400 people how to build guitars. I've made hundreds of guitars myself. Every kind of guitar imaginable. So, um, I want to pass that on to you guys. That's what this channel is all about. But also, obviously, I've got to make a living. We've got to eat. So, um, 
we need to make some money somehow so I appreciate any support that you can give us um, I'm absolutely gobsmacked by um, the recent support we've had from you guys um, for instance I know what I'm having for my tea tonight Theron <laughs> so Theron sent us a box full of pies have we got one to show him Oh, no. No, I'm having a meat and potato pie tonight for my tea, Theron. Thank you very much for that. Pie box. We've got a whole box full of pies. Uh, Bowen's pies. Bowen's pies. Right, Can't wait. Last question and then I'm done. Yeah, this is a good one though. Stephen Pascoe said, um, are you planning to go to Newcastle to the show this year? Well, aren't all the shows cancelled this well, year? I don't know, but it's a general question about shows. Isn't I it? would have loved to have gone to some shows this year, but I believe they're all cancelled. So there are no guitar shows this year. But... Um, as soon as they're starting back up, um, I'm going to start signing up for them. So um, I am going to do some shows as soon as they come back. We did do all the shows. You know, I've been making guitars for how long? 20. 20 years I've been making guitars. So we've done all the shows back in the day. Um, to be honest, it gets a bit boring after a while. Um, standing in a room with a forest of guitar trees uh, next, like forest of guitars in front of you people walk around with blinkers on and they're not even looking at the guitars most of the guitars in the room are made in Korea and I'm standing there with my handmade stuff that's like 10 times the price people just walk straight past and they think I'm trying to rip them off um, so um, if I if I actually stop a guy and say look I made these guitars they're absolutely gobsmacked and they, they want to talk for me to me for two hours but I have to physically stop people and say, look, I made these guitars. Um, most people just walk past with blinkers on and they assume that you're importing them from Korea. So um, we did do all the guitar shows back in the day. I've even done, um, it got so irritating, it got to a point where I just thought, right, I'm going to build a guitar at the show and that'll get some attention. So if you ever heard of a guy building a guitar at a guitar show, that was me. I did that back in the day, um, a long time ago. I did it three or four times. I even got asked to go to um, some festivals in Italy to do it. So I've even, I put everything I needed in a suitcase and I traveled to Italy and we built a guitar over a weekend um, in the outside, in the outdoors, whilst people watched. I've been told it can't be done while I'm actually doing it. So what can you say? Here I am. I'm here to show you guys that it can be done. And look at me, I'm not a genius. I'm not um, very clever, really. I'm just determined. You do need a certain amount of determination. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's easy. Um, it's not easy. There's... Um, but what I've done is I've, I've built down what looks like a really difficult job and I've broken it down into 50 or 60 jobs that I think anybody can do. You can do this if you're not sure and if people are telling you you can't. Um, check out a few of my other videos and just watch them through and see if you think you can do them. And I bet you can. I bet you think you can. And I know that you can because I've bought face-to-face -face talk. 400 people how to do it um, and I've now got hundreds of students online people all over the world building guitars using my simple methods so thanks for watching guys especially to you who've made it right till the end um, extra brownie points um, yeah speaking of which hero points here's something hero points you can earn hero points on the website if you make a comment or like a comment post a picture, tell us about the guitar you're building, um, then every activity you do will earn you hero points. And what people haven't really clicked onto yet is that, you know, you can actually spend the hero points in the shop. So if you get really active in the forums, help people out, answer some questions, put some pictures up of work that you're doing, um, you'll be building up a stock of hero points you can actually buy real stuff go into the shop um, and put a fretboard in your cart and you'll see how much it costs in hero points so if you earn those hero points free stuff 
because I wanted to give something. I didn't want to just take, 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 take. I want to give something back to you guys. So you guys, everything you do on that website is valuable. It's worth something. So I wanted to give you guys something back. So hero points. You can earn hero points. And, you know, if you, if you work hard enough for long enough and do enough stuff, you could get an entire guitar kit. Um, it would take some doing, but it is possible. So anyway, just wanted to throw that in. Um, for you guitar making heroes out there, free stuff if you want it. And, um, and that's it, we're done. So Carol's gonna fade to black and um, hopefully you found something in that that you enjoyed or found useful. So um, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure you get notified. I noticed a lot of you guys haven't done that. Hit the bell icon, like it, subscribe, share it and all that. Um, jobs are good and thanks for watching and remember measure twice, cut once. <laughs>